Alessandro Ciccati is an 18-year-old defender born in Parma, educated and raised in Perth, Australia, and now plays in Italy, Serie B, with Parma again. Alessandro, thank you so much for joining us. Hello, thank you very much for having me. Absolute pleasure. I've been watching your good work and your progression over the last nine months, especially such a, a roll on you've got now. You've just been called up to the Italian under 21s as well. Congratulations on that. Tell us a little bit about your recent call up with Nicolato. For sure, it was a surprise being uh, one of the youngest in the squad and still being able to play in the under 20s. But I've been lucky enough and my coach at Parma believed in me and that allowed me to play so far five games this season out of seven. It was a great level, great quality and a, and a great group of lads. You've represented Italy at under 20 level as well this year. There you were called up with a fellow Italo-Australiano, we'll say, with Christian Volpato, called up at the same time. You guys have played each other a couple of times in the Primavera. So with Christian, I actually played with him in the under 18s. We played against each other twice. So I already knew him previously. I didn't know him on a personal basis, but I knew that he was obviously an Australian playing in Italy, as there, as there aren't many. When we both got called up to the Italian squad, it was a relief, you know, having someone that, you know, sort of has similar background, you have someone to speak English to as well, even though, you know, Italian, speaking Italian isn't a problem but it's always good to have someone that you may may relate to more than others yeah i can imagine from the same autostrada you both coming from australia back into italian life and being called up for the italian national team what an honor that is so how are you enjoying life in Parma? it's a great city it's not too big but it's not too small there's a bit of everything there's always something to do football is a big part of the city's culture it's one of the most successful clubs here in italy so Parma Calcio plays a part in everyone's life and you know, it's a great honor to be able to to represent a club like this and uh, obviously play in front of the fans. What an atmosphere that is. You've seen those Parma fans pack out the Tardini and you've got Pisa away this weekend on Saturday, but someone's told me that the party might continue after that on Monday. You're turning 19. <laughs> yeah, uh, so for the moment I'm not thinking about my birthday. I'm more thinking about the game on Saturday and hopefully we can get the win and that'll be my gift to myself if we can have a successful day Saturday against Pisa. But yes, on Monday I am turning 19 and lucky enough I have my family here in Italy actually here for the moment. I have, uh, I have everyone. It'll be, it'll, be a good, uh, it'll be a good week, hopefully. Let's hope for the best. Spoken like a true professional, putting the job first and partying after. But for those that don't know, Alessandro came to Italy a couple of years ago after his 17th birthday, and now he's turning 19. Two years on, what a leap that you've taken to come through Parma and now be called up a couple of different times for international level. You made your international debut against Norway in late March in the under 20s. You played 85 minutes in a massive 5 0 win under Alberto Bolini. It was my first call up. You know, lots of emotions, lots of excitement being able to, to represent such a country with uh, so much past and all the success Italy has had in football. I went to Norway, and Norway was, a, I'd like to say, an overall positive. It was my first game and we won, as you said, 5-0. In absolutely freezing weather, it was cold, you know, playing with gloves and, and, and all sorts. So it was a great experience and uh, I couldn't be happier. And an illustrious win. When you put on that Azzurro jersey and you go back to Padma and you put on the Giallo Blue, as you said before, Parma is one of the most successful Italian sides, the fourth most successful in terms of winning in Europe. And you've got that tradition behind you. You've got a huge fan base you guys just missed out, I guess, in the last month. There was a little bit of hope to make the playoffs for Serie B last season. At the moment, now you're back in seventh spot and with a big chance now to get another three points against the Pisa side that's kind of underperforming compared to where they were at last season. Is there a difference in the way, in, in the mentality, when you go into a game against, maybe a, a big game against a top four opponent or a bottom three team? To be honest, it's how, how we approach our games. We approach them just as if we were playing, you know, Real Madrid or Barcelona. You can't underestimate your opponent because then that's when, you know, things might not go as planned. So we're only three points from the top. Hopefully lots of success this season for us and everyone that works there and all the players and all the fans because uh, that's what everyone deserves. Going back to how we prepare the game, we prepare just like every other game. No, nothing changes. It's, if anything, you know, you've got to be even more focused. They've got nothing to lose and we've got everything to lose. And I guess from an adversarial point of view, playing Padma, every other team wants to beat you in the division because you're one of the bigger clubs 
you're one of the more successful clubs and a scalp like the Juddler Blue, a team like Pisa searching for confidence, that's what they'll be trying to do, especially at home. And they narrowly missed out on Serie A promotion. That's going to be huge. That's this Saturday on the 8th of October, a 2 p.m. kickoff. If you're in Italy, if you're in Pisa, make sure you try and get down to watch Pisa against Parma. You made your Parma debut starting against Spal in February, and that came under former allenatore Iacchini. And Parma won that match quite convincingly, 4-0 at the Tardini. I watched that match. The atmosphere, incredible. You were tasked with defending against the likes of Melchiori and Pepe Rossi. I've spoken about this with you in an interview that we conducted back in March, but can you elaborate for our listeners about your debut? It was a bit of a bit of a surprise. I didn't actually know I was playing just up until just before the game. Once I saw that uh, the boss put my name on the board saying I was playing, it was a it was a great feeling. I, I was uh, felt like it was my time to show, to prove, and to bring some excitement. And hopefully, I do all I can just to win the game and bring the three points home. Yeah, it was a great game playing against you know great players and player like Rossi, fantastic career. But things haven't worked out for him exactly, you know, with all the injuries and everything. But for sure, you can't take away his his technical qualities from him. Yeah, Pepe Rossi, an absolute legend of the game. So many clubs and representing Italy at senior level as well and a clean sheet for you on that day. You played just in front of Gigi Buffon, who was leading the way from goals and glorious effort. What an atmosphere it was. The bandiere in the tribune. You said it was your moment on that day, back when we spoke. Been playing there with some really big players as well. Franco Vasquez, up-and-comers like Bernabé. You've got Christian Ansaldo, who's joined from Torino. You've got all these experienced players coming in. You're definitely one of the younger ones. Do you look up to these players if there is a particular player that you look up to? Yeah, you've got to take a bit of everything from everyone. All I'm there to do is to learn and there are some top players and they have played at the top levels and that's something I'd obviously like to do. So you've got to learn so much from them. That's all you can only do. Specifically this season, one player who I actually am learning a lot from is Romagnoli. He previously played for Empoli. He's a great person. He's a He's a great teacher, but can't take nothing away from the others like uh, like Gigi, obviously, you know, the name speaks for itself. And then players like Ansali, you know, he's a he's a great person on and off the pitch. And there's, there's so many things that you can learn from a player like that. When you think about listeners and everyone's dream is to play some form of professional football and, and you're out there doing it now and you've already equaled last season in terms of appearances you started four times last season you've already done that you started four in the first seven games and Padma are a top eight side at this point it looks like as though Fabio Peck has come in and he's brought in a different mindset yeah everyone wants to win we don't think too much ahead we think uh, about what's happening in the moment we do our best and uh, the coach does his best and we try to get the result and with the result comes more success for the club and everyone's happy so that's that's all that we're trying to do and uh, bring back the ambitious club which it still is very ambitious but trying to get it back where it was yeah so an ambitious attitude at Padma now amongst the players with Pekia taking over the Palmer project. The sense of belief there with Pekia there for everyone to see. Can you envision a promotion to Serie A given that your new coach elevated his former team Cremonese who hadn't played in the top tier since 1996? The the hope, the speranza must be at an all-time high. Something that everyone wants, everyone in the league wants it. So it's a matter of who will be the best and then we'll see from there. We'll see by the end of the season where, where we are and hopefully had a successful season. So you've stated that Simone Romagnoli is a player that you look up to currently. Is there a historical, iconic player that you would aspire to mould yourself into? There are so many players, great centre-halves, players like uh, Paolo Maldini. For me, he's arguably the best defender to play football. But then there's other defenders like Thiago Silva, Sergio Ramos, which obviously I take a close look at and uh, try to replicate my game and learn from them. From With Parma being the fourth most successful Italian club on the European circuit, do the stories of success still infect daily life at the Tardini with legendary names like Dino Baggio, Zola, Crespo, Giladino, Turam, Veron, Chiesa, the list goes on, Cannavaro. Yeah, for sure there's uh, the photos on the walls everywhere with all the trophies that Parma have previously lifted. Once you're there, you are, you're well aware what 
Parma, Pazwan, and it encourages you to do that yourself one day because you know the club is everything. If they've done it in the past, why can't you do it now, you know? Yeah, a glittering history at Parma. And it's good to see that they're putting those images in front of you for inspiration. It's exactly like the walls at Serie A headquarters. Does Gigi Buffon bring up those stories, the, the halcyon days at Parma, seeing as he was part of those? Does he bring those up often in the dressing room or maybe over a cafe? He's a very humble guy. He doesn't speak too much about this. We're all aware and... Um, he doesn't need to. No, he doesn't. It's there. Everyone knows. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. So let's go back to the current season. What's the toughest away trip, in your opinion, in Serie B? Oh, the toughest away trip this season so far it's been Genoa you know it's a I like to say an English style stadium you know the fans are just two meters away from you on the field stadium is full people chanting it's a I don't want to say hostile but it, when you're away you are you're well aware that you are away yeah the Marassi Genoa yeah. you know another massive club and as you said an English style atmosphere they are called the Genoa Cricket and Football Club for a reason Alessandro so yeah uh, maybe Palmer can, can bring in a cricket team at some point I'm gonna come over and roll the arm over <laughs> Listen, did you play cricket at all just just with my mates just in the in the backyard you know with the, with the bin and with a with a racket some summertime Time backyard cricket always good. Yeah. So Genoa, the toughest away trip that you faced so far, a three-three draw. What a game that was! And I encourage everyone to go and look up those highlights on the Lega B platforms. But which away trip in general is the toughest, in your opinion? For sure, it's the far ones. You know, playing down in Palermo or Bari. They're very hostile grounds. You know, clubs from the south there. The fans are a bit more. Bit more heated. It's a little bit more picante in their blood and the arabiate yeah. in the sauce. Yeah, correct. <laughs> and that ends up barbera has got a, a big, big reputation for for giving that to opposing sides, as does the San Nicolo. And what a place that's been for Bardi so far, undefeated. I think they're the only undefeated team still in the league. Yeah, you're actually playing Bari in the Coppa Italia in the middle of October. Something to look forward to. We're playing at Tardini. It would be a great game to, to take part of playing against a uh, top club. Can you name who you believe to be the best striker in Serie B? We'll say outside of Parma. Outside? Oh, because I was going to say uh, Bobby English, but uh, outside of Parma, I wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> so no one brings shivers. It's more or less insert striker here when you go out in the park. They're all the same. Yeah. You've got a job to do. I approach every game the same. As I said in an interview previously, it doesn't matter what my position is. It matters what I'm capable of doing. If I'm the better man on the day, then he could be a uh, you know, player with a big name, but it doesn't It doesn't, It doesn't. doesn't take a toll. It could be Massimo Corda. Yeah. And it could be interviewer David Farini. It doesn't matter. It's the same <laughs> person to do the job on. That's good to know. Good to know. Okay. Just in case we ever meet on the park and need to know uh, your weaknesses. So uh, you've got none by the sound of it. So no strikers are giving Alessandro Circati nightmares apart from Bobby English, and that's during training. Yes. <laughs> so you've come back to Parma. It was a place that is, well, I guess has a, a long history in your family. Your father, Gianfranco, played at Parma. He played in the 90s in Italy before making the move over to Australia with Perth. Right. Tell us a little bit about uh, coming back to play at a club where your father's played at. When we come here, there was a couple of people that were still there when dad was there. So obviously they were they were very happy. They were very accepting. They were very, um, they made me feel like oh, I've been there for, I've been there for 10 years. You've told us about your favorite Italian players, but you were raised in Australia. Is there an Australian player that you look up to? Parma has had a bit of a history to, for hosting Australian players. They've had, uh, you know, players of the likes of Vince Grella and Mark Bresciano, two club legends that, that were there during their, their glory days. So two players that I'd like to carry on the, the Australian history of the club. Hopefully we get to keep in touch over the course of the coming months. We'll also mention to the listeners that Serie B is a league that will play throughout the World Cup. There is no pause. So make sure you continue to watch Lega B, watch Alessandro Circati and Parma keep on keeping on. So your aspirations for the remainder of the season? Obviously, from a personal perspective, I just uh, play as many games as, 
as, as I can to the best of, of my ability. As a whole, I hope that all the boys are focused and uh, give all that they have, and that's all that you can ask for to, to give 100% every game. Regarding the, the national team, I'm actually not too sure what the schedule is looking like. Aspirations for Italy, uh, hopefully aspirations for a return to Serie A. Alessandro Circati, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you soon. Good luck for this weekend's game against Pisa and Auguri for your 19th birthday. Thank you very much for having me and it's, it's been a pleasure. This is Lego Football.